All right, so Jason Harper joins us now to talk a little bit about, okay, so he's the sports guy. His first <laughs> instinct is what's going on with my stuff. We have yeah. the incredible uh, Truman Bodden Sports Complex. Mm -hmm. That was one of the first points of concern. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I kind of looked out the window. We had this uh, tower cam shot early in the day that showed uh, the Georgetown primary field and all the kids were out on the field. And I thought, well, I hope everything's okay. Right, right. The kids bent over to the annex uh, from the Georgetown primary mm -hmm. after the, the earthquake. Earlier this morning, uh, I drove over after the earthquake this morning to the Truman Bodden Sports Complex. As you know, it will host career of the games in April just to see if there was no structural damage, anything of the sort. And there was none, not even a, a broken pane of glass. So it was, it was good news. So while you were out there, there were actually some crews out there as yeah, well some checking crews, some out. crews came out shortly after I arrived, uh, both sides, for the main stand and the other side, just to check and make sure everything was fine, everything was okay. Uh, the new boxing gym held up well as well. Uh, also on the South Sound side, the squash club, I spoke to Dan Knipe, the club manager of the South Sound squash club. Funny story here. Dan and Dean Watson, uh, one of the development managers from the club, inside the club, felt everything. And they tried to break the world record for the 40 yard and get outside. It was pretty, <laughs> Dan said it was scary. But when he got outside, the guys on the rugby pitch, the national rugby players that mm -hmm. they're working out, they felt nothing. Uh, on the other side, adjacent to them was the tennis court. They felt nothing either. So the guys so outside <laughs> felt nothing, but the people in the actual building did, it's which I think is interesting. Very interesting, and, and Don is still trying to figure out what, why that happened. But and that's right across the street from that, the sinkhole that we have some video. Right across the street on. from the sinkhole. So the squash club, they felt some of the, the tremor. No damage there either, but the tennis club and the rugby club, both intact, no one felt anything. Well, good to know that everything's all yeah, safe definitely. and sound all the same. Let's head over to some news now, April, to some cricket news first off this evening. Uh, the new local cricket season bowled off last weekend at Smith Road. A fair crowd turned up at the Oval for the first matches in the 2010 season. Division 2 2020 champions, SO Cubs, dominated the rest team, winning easily with Ricardo Roach, scoring a blistering 79 not out. That was on Saturday. The Masters pulled off a close win over the ladies in Sunday's first game. And in the future game, the rest returned and defeated Prison by 12 runs in a low-scoring match to get the local cricket season off and running. And to international cricket news now, West Indies players Kyron Pollard and Kimar Roach went for big bucks in this year's Indian Premier League auction. The IPL 2020 tournament is the richest cricket competition in the game. And the emerging stars, Pollard and Roach, were in the top frame of international selections today. Pollard tied with New Zealand all wrong, New Zealand fast bowler, rather, Shane Bond, for the highest bid, going for 750,000 US dollars. Pollard suits up for Mumbai Indians in the tournament bowling off in March. And Roach went to the Deccan Chargers for 720,000. Wow! wow. All around the Pollard propelled Trinidad and Tobago to the final of the ICC Champions Trophy last year with his big hitting and recently helped the Australian club side, South Australia. There he is with some big shots and he helped South Australia to the final of the Big Bash tournament down under. His stock has steadily risen in recent months and the Indians are looking to capitalize on his big hitting services while Roach was one of the bright sparks in an otherwise dull West Indies tour of Australia using his frightening speed to shake up the Aussies, especially their big captain, Ricky Ponting.